Welcome back to the GSL Code A. We're about to find out who is getting into Code S. We've already had one player fall, one player rise. Flying did advance. And now it's time for Haiba up against Yoda. Flying did a really good job here against Crazy. It was an intense series that we saw going the entire distance, flying in the end, taking the last two games, game two and three against his opponent. And especially the last build was very crisp and very dangerous. Even with Crazy going for a two-base build because he scouted the early gateway instead of a forge play, he was not able to hold against this. There was no chance for him. Skipping the Roach Warren up against two Immortals and a lot of Zealots, no way to hold it. Yeah, did not work out. I mean, once he saw it coming, it was already too late. He desperately made spine crawlers, you know, but it was just... The game was over at that point. Build or loss. Yeah. He did not have the production. He didn't have the lava that he needed to get out enough units to deal with this push. So very, very strong. And this is something that Protoss players are throwing out there. We've seen a lot of this play by players like Killer and others also in Pro League and in the GSTL. So very strong pushes against Zerg these days. Really well played. But now, as you already said, we are heading into a Zerg versus Terran with Hyva up against Yona. Yoda, you know, he had a bit of a rough time in Code S. It was not his best run, but he's a dominant player. He's one of the players that everyone was saying they thought was going to be one of the better Terrans in Heart of the Swarm because of his performance at uh, IEM. Yeah. Yoda at least got into the round of 16, into the second group stage. That was already important for him, so now he only has to play this game in uh, the uh, in Code A to get out of Code A into Code S. But the same is also true for Hiva, a player that won his Code A bracket. Yeah, he, he qualified. Qualifier. Exactly. Yeah. So this is one of those stories where you've got a Code S player who might follow the up and downs, and you've also got a player who's basically trying to rainbow road it. He might be able to go straight into Code S on his first time through. So this is a really important moment for Hiva as well. Yeah, Hiva to the left, and of course Yoda to the right, Atlas being our first map today in this Terran versus Zerg. Yep, Atlas, such a great map. It's really grown on me quite a bit. Yeah, it's a very interesting map. I mean, all those builds that we've already seen being played on Atlas is one of the newer maps, which means that a lot of new strategies are coming up there. Yep. A lot of players just trying different timings, trying different strategies. That's definitely working out quite well so far for quite a few. Yoda getting ready here. You can see he's been around for such a long time in StarCraft 2. He's got a lot more experience than Hyva, but Hyva with a great team behind him to help him train. Oh yeah, that is definitely true. I mean, the Kespa player here in a good spot. On the other hand, you have Yoda with a lot of players to train with as well. The ESF player for LGIM. He will do his best to get back to Kudas right away. And we're going to find out who takes game number one here at the GSL Code A, the Challenger League Korea. Call it all. Who gotta get into it? We are starting with a six pool. At the top right of the map, we have the Kespa player. It is. STX Soul Fever. You know, this is not the first time we've seen a six pool from this guy, and I don't think it'll be the last. Yeah, I don't think so either. That's something that could work. You know, it's always cool when you see a player opening up a best of three with such a volume strategy. You know, you don't really see it in this matchup very often these yeah. days anymore. To the bottom right of the map, we have the Terran player in blue starting for LGIM. It is... LGIM Yoda. And Haiba is sending his Overlord in the correct direction. He's also sending out a drone scout right now, so he wants to make sure he scouts right away. And if Yoda makes a command center first on the low ground, that may just cost him the game. Yeah, that is completely right. And it looks like he's going for a command center first, at least so far. If he makes it in his main base, he can still hold this. Yeah, if he makes it at the wall, if he plays a saver version, he will be able to wall off if he scouts what's going on. But the first Zerglings are already on the way. Yeah, and he doesn't send out a scout at all. Being built, of course, I mean. The rally on the SCV looks like it's going to be a main, uh, main base wall. He pulls the drones all but one, so he can still send a few more reinforcing Zerglings. And the SCV is now at the bottom of the map. He's going to drop the command center first. Where is he going to build it? He smells something, and he's going for it in the main. Another he drone sent back. to build it now. He needs to build the supply depot. I think he's going to start with the barracks here very soon. Uh, and here we go. He's moving in. He completes it. He completes the wall. Now he has to send the SCVs to repair. Yeah, he has to repair that depot, and he also has to make sure he doesn't lose the SCV making either of those buildings, because that's going to be a big problem, too. He has the SCVs there. This should be game. It should be game, but he has to make all the right decisions. He has the wall there. He needs to send the SCVs in. He needs to start building the command center. If the command center 
falls or if the barracks falls, he is going to lose this game. Commander is getting pretty low, in fact, but it will look like likely finish here. I don't think it's going to finish, Wolf. He's going to have to cancel it. Oh, he has you're, you're in the position. It's too much damage done. He, he can't loses build the it. building SCV. He's using the building SCV. He's immediately starting to build, but here's the cancel. Cancel. Barracks is not complete. He's going to lose that SCV. He's and that's game. The game. I mean, unless he has some godly micro with his SCVs and repairs no. perfectly, I don't no, think no, no, this no. works. This is over. This is over. His only chance was to take down, to get the wall up, and he was not able to do that. That's it. He loses everything here. GG. What an insane quick little game there. Hiva gets lucky with positions. Scouts first with his overlord. Uh. Actually, he was scored also with the drone, so that was not him getting lucky. That was a very calculated build. Well, I mean, his uh, he was lucky that it was not cross, because that gave him a little bit of a speed boost. Yeah, no, no, that, that's true. If that was would have been crossed, I think he would have lost yeah. the game, because that gives him a few Yoda, that is, that it gives Yoda a few extra seconds to complete the command center. And the problem for him really was the command center was not completed. If it's done, you can just repair it with four or five SCVs, no problem. But the problem for him was that it was more damage dealt to the command center than he was giving that he was gaining hit points while right. it was being completed. Definitely true, and that was a quick little game we saw there, and game number two is going to be on Akalon Waze. Yep. That was basically, you know, a little bit of luck comes in there with the positions, because like you said, if you were cross, then I don't think he would have been able to stop the command server finishing. Doesn't mean he necessarily loses, but definitely helps to get close positions in that situation. And you know, this is one of the situations where Yoda looks at the game and is like, hey, I even played the command center on the high ground and I was not able to stop this. But at Hiva went all in. Not only did he go for the six pull, but he pulled all of his drones too. So that was very calculated. But also gambling, of course, a bit. He has the better odds in this scenario because there are only three bases where his opponent can spawn. Two of them will work in his favor and only one will make him lose the game. If there is this kind of wall at the top. But yeah, he couldn't stop that. Yoda did everything he could. He saw it and immediately pulled all the SCVs over. Yeah. A lot of them he replaced the SCV that was taken out that was building the command center. But he could already see before the SCV fell that there was just no way for him to complete the CC. Exactly. Once the CC is down... I mean, yeah, he's got 550 minerals to try to repair his SCVs, but obviously it's just not going to work. Yeah, you can try to block the gap with a few SCVs and just have them on hold position. That's kind of the only thing that you can do, but yeah. even that will lose you the SCVs, and you probably will not be able to get that barracks up anyway. Exactly. So, a quick game one, and, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's just, we're going to go into game two in just a moment. Hiva had to go to the bathroom, so he's just running there really quick. That's actually so funny. I mean... The guy plays it. You know, this is probably the reason why he no, played I the was wondering about He this. was probably going into the booth and he was like, I really have to go. But the coach is like, you can't. Your game starts right now. You should have gone five minutes ago. But coach is like, after the first game, so he's looking at the map and he's like, oh, damn it. I have to go for a six pool right now. I can't hold it for like a three base play or whatever. So he goes for the six pool, jumps out of the booth and runs straight yeah, to the you bathroom. Know, I, I, was, I was looking at the chat when he said to go to the bathroom. I was like, is this a talking point? Like, <laughs> I'm like, can we actually describe like, is this a possible motivation for the six Full. Um, you know, there'll probably be an interview if he ends up winning the series that will probably discuss that. Uh, you know, why did you go for the six pool? And he might say, well, you know, I really had to go yeah. to the bathroom. So. Exactly. And you know, everyone's talking. It's like, oh my god, this is so smart. Like, he analyzed the play and then Hiva later on is like, no guys, I actually just had to go. <laughs> nah, I, I think, of course, that this is more be him being like very analytical about Yoda's play and taking that, that chance. But it's still a little bit funny that, <laughs> that after four minutes in the game, the first thing he does runs out of the booth, goes straight to the bathroom here but he's already back yep. so we can start with game number two i expect to see a much longer more yeah. standard game here yoda obviously not happy about this hive on the other hand looks very relieved not only about the win in game number one yeah you know it's a great feeling after you go to the bathroom you sit down you're back in your computer chair you, you feel like just so much more relaxed and you know you have this weight off of your shoulders it, it could definitely make you feel like you know queuing up for that next game you've got yeah. some momentum on here we should call the sixth pool the bladder build yeah the bladder build, man. It's good. It's good on the ladder. It's good yeah. on the bladder. If you have to go, just go. Yeah, exactly. Well, jumping into game number one, we're gonna find out what Yoda has up his sleeves against Hiva. He had the GSL Code A, the Challenger League Korea with Paul Wolf. <laughs> 